Hello. Oh, hello, everybody. We're back with more, uh, this time, the podcast. Uh, it is Thursday, which means it is podcast time. We previously were here for a Nintendo uh, reaction that we did earlier today. That was a lot of fun. Yep. If you are uh, a person that was there and now you're here, guess what? Two streams in a day? That's that's good good eating, I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Value. Mm-hmm. Yes, how has everybody been doing now that we can talk sans Nintendo? <laughs> yeah, without them listening in. Yep. Well, it's been... Calvin, you've been well? It's been pretty okay. Yeah. Not suffering from anything life-threatening or extreme pain or anything like that. Just not sleeping the best, but you know, I think that's kind of all of us here and there. Sure. But it's been ailing you when it comes to sleep. Um... Just not being tired. Yeah? Yeah. I think it's mm-hmm. partially to do with my uh, ADD or ADHD. There's differing schools of thought on which it is or what okay. it should be called. But yeah. I have, like, delayed sleepiness. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, the period where my body or your body, I should say, would get naturally tired at, like... You know, ten or eleven, and you'd be like, "Oh, oh, oh I should go to bed." Yep. Mine is is delayed, really, by by a lot, and uh, it's difficult to to fall asleep when I'm not tired. Sure. And staying up doesn't help. <laughs> does uh does your activity level throughout the day change that? Like, if you're really working hard versus, you know, more um, of like a a day at the studio watching TV. The only time that I have actually gotten tired, sleepy, and been able to fall asleep at a normal, like, clock time yep. was the week that we were in London. Oh. I think that's because my sleep schedule was yeah basically, like, it, it was changed by the same amount of time that my day is normally uh-huh. fucked up or behind. So the jet lag worked for you. It worked very well. It was like the best week of sleep that I've had for years. So that's what you need to do. You just need to like every week just yeah. go ahead a couple more hours in a, in a time zone. And we'll just circumvent the earth every year. Yeah, your yeah, people would have been like explorers <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Only only going east, not west. West gotcha. is bad. Yeah. I get eaten by bears going west. See, I, I kind of had the opposite problem. I get tired right around quitting time. Yeah. Like between 5 and 6.30 is like, I could just go to bed if I wanted to. I have to. like, I have a slump. Yeah? Right? To where like my energy level, like it, le- it like reduces and then plateaus, but then it just stays at that for uh, gotcha. like 10 more hours. <laughs> See, I always get a second wind and end up staying up too late. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll take a nap, and that's a mistake. Because if I nap for a couple hours, then I it's impossible for me to get back to sleep. Yeah. But I also do the thing where, like, I can't, like, I need, like, a buffer time between when I've done with my day's activities and when I go to bed, which is about 90 minutes to two hours. Like, I can't get home and go to bed. I have to get home, wait two hours, and then I can go to bed. So if I get home late, then, yeah, that, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, you need that wind down time. Yeah. Makes sense. Like any time I stream, uh, stream until 9 or 10 or when I was playing Tears of the Kingdom, even later, like I know, like I just, I'm just going to go sit on the couch and wait, wait for this, wait out the clock, and then I get tired. <laughs> yeah. Before I had COVID, I had a pretty good like sleeping schedule. Like I would get tired at dark and sleep through the night and be fine. Yeah. But once I got COVID, I can't sleep naturally anymore. Mm hmm. Gotcha. Take sleeping pills. Yeah. I've every time I take sleeping pills, I mean, it, they always work great, but I always feel too, like, groggy in the morning. Mm. It's hard for me to wake up. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I, uh, I've been feeling like, I don't know. The, you know, you are right. Like, ever since COVID, like, I do have a problem with energy management. But I feel like it's gotten a little bit better for me. I, I've really, I, what I have to do is I just, I have to, in the evening, do something. 
Sure. Yeah, I have to I have to do something in my yard or clean up something or something like that. And I usually can get to bed pretty pretty easily. All right. Well, that's the sleep conversation. Mm-hmm. So uh, it has been uh, quite uh, some time here in this last week uh, for Blind Wave because we have a brand new website. We website. do. Yeah. And uh, Rick, you, I guess, have had a small part in this. A little bit. Uh, small. Compared to the rest of us. Yep. No, I'm sorry. Rick has been almost completely responsible for all these amazing things. And uh, I just we look try at pretty to. pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Rick. Yeah, uh, it's blindwave.com now, so that's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's a new website. It's been in the works for a long time. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Not just myself. There's been a whole team. Yeah, a team continuing to work for it. Mm-hmm. So we still got some bugs that we are ironing out. Some but, of them that have been fixed in the last couple of days too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can go over like some of the stuff that has been fixed. Some of the stuff that we know is still broken. Um, the launch was pretty good on like a stability point. I don't know if anyone remembers when we launched Blind Wave, <laughs> like the old website. Uh huh. Yeah. But um, Demon Slayer would take that thing down. Oh yeah. Every single week. Yep. Every week. <laughs> every time. Every time there was an anime thing. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So um, hey, I was pretty proud of our Squarespace site when we first started. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was not. <laughs> I have no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um. But from a stability point of view, I'm pretty happy with how things have gone. Yeah, uh, We've introduced a lot of new features into mm-hmm. this site, um, some of which are working better than others. Yep. But they all will work eventually, I promise. Um, yeah, that's the thing about, like, well, you can prepare and prepare and prepare, but until you actually make the changeover, you don't know what's going to break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, There's was so much testing and uh-huh. everything, and then it moves to a different server and things go wrong. Yep. Yeah. So here we are, but um, no, it's functioning pretty well for the most part. Um, I don't know if they can see my screen yet. Okay, cool. Swap. Sweet. Ooh, pretty. There it is. Yep. So there it is. Um, there is a bit of uh, organizational issues with some things. So the search bar is a nice handy tool in case you can't find something otherwise. Um, mm. One of the bugs... You couldn't hit enter on search, it would break, but that works now. Oh, it does work. Good. Yeah. Sweet. So so that one's fixed. Um, so you can search and do all that stuff, and it will show up here as well as you're sort oh. of typing things in. And that kind of functionality exists on all the different search boxes on the site. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually having a little bit of slowdown for the home page sure. right now. But I would, uh, I would like to run a poll and see... Who people have picked as their hero on the site too? Yeah, so you can choose a hero, which uh, will change your color scheme, and also will give you uh, some recommendations based on who you picked. Mm-hmm. Which we can see that in a second. But um, uh, another good way to filter through stuff right now on the homepage is this huge content library. So you can filter by series, and you can go by latest, by genre, so on and so forth. So. Um, that's a pretty good way to filter through things right now. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to like everything but movies, I'm feeling pretty good about how things are going. Some things are out of order, uh, so we're working on that. Like yep. um, Star Wars Rebels. Like um, we had two series of those, so those all as when we brought them over, all got mixed and matched. Yeah, that so we're gonna nice. get those broken back out. Um, we watched. Clone Wars in a different order than it aired, so we're going to make sure that those are all in the correct order and things. Um, but as far as like actual videos go, actually, I should look at um, I should look at an anime because that's one of the things that we fixed that people were a little confused at on launch. Yeah. Uh, let's just go to this guy. Uh, nope, that one's not fixed. Let's go to. What's a recent one? Spy uh, Family? Let's see. Yeah, Spy Family would probably be a good one. Okay. So one of the things that is still broken, um, so on some of the older anime reactions, um, there's not a way to switch between the reaction and the discussion. There should be a button right here. Mm-hmm. 
that will say either reaction or if you click it, it'll take you to the reaction and then you can go back to the discussion. Um, that was called part one and part two. Now it's called reaction discussion. Hopefully yep. a little more clear. Yep. Um, but that's missing on some of the older videos. That was a thing that existed until we went to the production. So we're trying to get that fixed. Um, that will be fixed soon. Um, yeah. So another feature is if you go into your profile, you can make recommendations. And this is to anyone who has an account on the site. Uh, you can type in a movie or a show, and um, you can add this to sort of a vote. And um, we can look at that data and see what people are interested in. Yeah. So before we would do like uh, one time a year for movies and TV shows, we would have surveys where we would say, recommend us what it is that you want us to watch. We did this like huge survey that anyone could go in and vote for. Um, mm -hmm. Now that can happen in real time. So as you're interested in things, you can update your recommendations. Yeah, you can update it at any time, right? Yep. Yeah. And we can check those out uh, whenever we need to. And so, um, you know, whenever a poll is coming up, mm -hmm. it's a good time to update your recommendations because we might look at those in order to determine what's going to go on the poll. Indeed. So I don't know. You know, Double Down, the classics, as an example. <laughs> yeah. You can vote for okay. that. And it's as simple as that. You can vote, you can unvote. I love how many options everybody has uh, on the site here. Um, Maybe too many options. So this will do movies and TV <laughs> shows. Uh, yeah. Right now, you can do a lot. It's supposed to be um, limited to three. Yeah. So we will fix that limit, but... Um, we are just counting the first three. Mm -hmm. So make sure you keep that in mind. But that should be fixed relatively soon. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Now, we did have, we also launched Blind Way Beyond. Yes. Go yes. Beyond. Which, um, so we still have our Patreon, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. nothing there has changed. So if you want to stick uh, with Patreon, you're absolutely free to. Um, nothing should be different other than... Um, in the near future, polls won't be directly on Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be on the site, on the video page for the relevant poll. Um, and that will just be locked for patrons or for yeah. um, uh, beyond members. Yeah, so like for example, the Ahsoka reaction that just went up, if you wanted to interact with the poll that's talked about at the end of that video, you'll just scroll down and there's the poll right there as long as you have access. Yep. So, um, but and you, it, the cool thing I like about that too is that in the future, when those polls are done with, people can still go back and see the results and, yeah. and all that stuff, which is I think really cool, for sure. Um, and so, Blind Way Beyond is basically just our own subscription service on our site that um, is gives you the equivalent of what a uh, four site writer would be on Patreon. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you the four week early access, access to the full length library. Voting in the polls, um, surveys, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it had a little bit of a rocky launch. Um, there was some issues with like getting the payment gateways to talk to the site. Mm -hmm. um, most people didn't have a problem. Some people did. We've been going through and resolving all of those original um, issues. Mm -hmm. If you're still having an issue, you can use the contact form on the site or you can just shoot us an email at help at blindwave.com. That's help at blindwave.com. Um, if you are still having an issue, so it it um, if you signed up for Beyond, you should be able to go into your profile. You should be able to go into membership, and you should be able to see under subscriptions your subscription. So if you did sign up and you don't see that, then uh, you can shoot us an email, and we can look into that for you. But okay. we should be getting everyone fixed. Um, and the problem is now fixed, so no one ongoing should be having that issue. Yeah, and we we'll, we try to get back to you guys as soon as we can. But sometimes evenings, weekends, you know, we're we're just we're, it's our team here, so have some patience. But we will get back to you as soon as we can. Yep. Uh, and there's a bunch of fun stuff that you can do, like your profile stuff. There's now a forum that you can go in and sort of chat. Uh, we're testing the idea of having this being replacements for commenting on the individual video pages themselves. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot to moderate. Um, it's, it's a lot of pages to like go through and check. So kind of wanted to try this out and see if 
like people wanted to talk about the things here, maybe. Yeah. And um, you also always have the option of clicking through and interacting on the YouTube comments as well. So we all know YouTube comments can be a minefield as well, too. Yeah. True. For sure. Uh, let's see. Is there any other big things? Um, if you do have problems or suggestions, uh, you can head over to the Discord. There's a website feedback channel there. Mm -hmm. There's a place in um, the forums on the site itself you can do it. You can fill out the contact form or shoot us an email at help. Um, if there's something that you see is wrong, we are probably aware of it, but maybe we aren't. Yeah. So uh, we're de I'm definitely spending like the next month or so focusing heavily on the site, getting everything working. And um, then past that, uh, we've got some other features that we plan on adding to the site as well. So. Yes, we do. Exciting times. Yeah, the, uh, a lot of those too. The, uh, we, we did want to make sure that we kept the option open. And obviously, Patreon has been such an important part of how we run for years and years and years. And uh, even, you know, even though now we have our own subscription on the website, it, it is one of those things where people, especially people that are finding us for the first time, might be like, I'm not putting my credit card information in this website or all that stuff, despite that we are being powered through Stripe, uh, PayPal. PayPal. Yep. Um, we definitely understand that Patreon as a brand is still a trusted uh, method of support. So it was important for us to keep that uh, up there for people that obviously have been using it for quite some time. Yeah, like some of the reasons we wanted to create our own is we just didn't want to be tied to Patreon in case yeah. Patreon doesn't exist next week. Yeah. Like you sure. never know what's going to happen when it's another company or something yeah. like that. And there's been a couple of times throughout the years where we've had people say like, "Oh, I would love to support you, but I'm I don't like Patreon. I don't I don't, don't want to deal business. with it." Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, also just we're at the mercy of their API when it comes to the connection. Yeah. And there's been a lot of struggles over the years getting that to work. Mm -hmm. Um, so now we have something that's tied directly and made for the site. Yeah. Um, that we don't have to worry about someone else's API. You have yep. to worry about PayPal and Stripe's API, but they are very, they have important reasons to make sure yeah. that that's working properly. Yes, <laughs> they want to keep that they supported. Get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas most people don't use the Patreon API stuff. Not the um, way that we use it, yeah. Yeah, we're um, one of the few. So, Although I did see that the normies were implementing some stuff. Oh, yeah? For that. So um, mm. we had to make sure we, we were ahead of them. And, yeah, we do. Yep. We always have to make sure. And, yeah. and put out a new website. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> so... Yeah, we really just scrambled once we saw that and put this together in a week or two, right? Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> yep. Oh, man, how long do you think it's been since we started work on the new website? I think it's been a year. A whole year? Probably. Yeah. I think um, at least a year. Yeah. I think it was, I don't know. I mean, there was a pretty lengthy planning phase. Yeah. And then um, we put together, um, like, I put the content together for, and then Jancy made it look very nice. Th this like website proposal that we shipped out to some different companies, mm -hmm. for some help. Yep. Um, and then we found a team and just have slowly been plugging away at it mm -hmm. for what feels like forever. <laughs> it does feel like a long time. Like I'm very happy. It's out. It, it feels like, uh, a, a, a phase of my life has it, like, I, I I've left that part behind. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It was, an, it was a hell of an achievement. Uh, it is a hell of an achievement. It's still actively being achieved. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I don't feel like it's done yet. Like, yeah. like once I get these first uh, issues ironed out, I think I'll feel a lot better about yeah. things. But Yeah. But we hope that you guys <laughs> have been enjoying the functionality and look forward to even more in the future. Yes. And... Obviously, to people that are signing up to Blind With Beyond, people that have been part of our Patreon, thank you so much. Like, we couldn't have done this without the people that have supported us over the years. Yep. Because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work, and it's a, it's a big expense, but it's why, we, uh, it's why we do it. We want people to be able to do all the extra stuff outside of YouTube as easy as possible, and this website has, it's never been easier to yeah. do that stuff, so... Um, 
Becky had a question about uh, if you had an account on the old site, can you log in on the new one with that? Yes, we migrated all the users over. Mm -hmm. um, if so, if uh, on the old site or on the current site, if you um, have ever logged in with Patreon in order to connect to your account, your username is going to be patron and a number. Yeah. Um, that wasn't super visible on the old site, mm -hmm. so most people didn't even notice. Uh, there's not a way to edit your username on the site, at least currently. Uh, that might be something that we implement, but it might be better if you want to change that to just delete your account and make a new one. Um, uh, the only reason I would say don't do that is if you have an active Beyond membership and you want to think about doing that, contact us. Yeah. Um, but, but if you have a Patreon membership, um, uh, you should be able to delete an account, make a new one, and just connect that one instead. All right. Cool. cool. But yeah. We have the results for the poll. Well, to be fair, I also have the default. <laughs> can can stream hear you? Oh, okay. Let's let's re say the way he was saying, Calvin. Yeah. Go ahead. So Eric is thirty two percent with seventeen votes. Rick is thirty percent with sixteen. I am twenty three percent with twelve votes. Aaron is fifteenth with eight votes. All right. And you can see Rick recommends. Yeah. So I keep saying to Baba, you need just a push to talk. It would help so much. <clears throat> I do have to say, I did have a lot of fun making all the thumbnails for the various series. Uh, because I've, I'm in most of them, and it's just it's fun to be able, you know, usually I avoid typing in the names of the shows that we do into Google or into uh, search docs because I don't want to get accidentally spoiled, but it was fun to just look through images and try to find something I thought uh, personified each show. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, Alex has a question. So let me, is this what you're talking about? So like if you go to register and it asks for a name. Um, so yeah, the, this field is everyone. So this um, isn't your like your uh, your legal name, um, this is going to be like your your screen name. Yeah. So um, your username isn't necessarily displayed in the forums. It's it's whatever you choose it to be here. If that makes sense. Gotcha. Yeah, it's like it's like your Twitter handle and then your at, right? Yeah. But we could rename that if that's not clear. Yeah, we could rename it nickname you or something. You could nickname, sure, yeah. But yeah, this one's public. And then you can go under your profile and you can add in more information and stuff. But mm -hmm. I've been having a fantastic time in the last uh, week. Now that finally it's out, I can, at the end of videos, instead of, instead of plugging Patreon, which I still do sometimes, I can literally say, if you want to see more, then go beyond! Line way beyond, and it's so fun every time. Yes, and I'll never, it never feels, get tired of it. it feels good. <laughs> uh, uh, will there be an Obi theme for this site? You can have an Obi here. I mean, I don't know what his color would be. He doesn't really. I mean, dogs don't really do well with color, so uh, it would be blurry. Yeah, or like it's everything is just surrounded by horses. Yeah, maybe we could do that. Just all of the videos like horse are, texture. are actually just one video he does of a like horse that. He loves repeating. horses, yeah. Um, we don't have plans to add any more heroes, but we do have plans to add uh, Obi and some other beloved Blind Wave uh, characters, yeah. people, uh, in a new feature that's planned for the site. I cannot wait for that feature. <laughs> I think people are really going to enjoy that. I, I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, me too. But we cannot say anything. We want to keep the suspense alive. At least for a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and we have no idea how much that's going to break. Yeah. 
for sure. Yep. All yeah. Right. No. Big thanks to everyone who's helped out. Um, mm-hmm. There's, you know, uh, people on the team who built it, but also um, like uh, Lessa, uh, Chancy, Jake mm-hmm. have all um, helped in different ways. Especially Eric has put together a lot of the thumbnails uh, for the different series and such. Mm-hmm. So, thank you everyone who has played a part in this massive endeavor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It used to be that I would have to, have to, I would get to make thumbnails every day. Uh, <laughs> and it was like, a, just doing this real quick was just like exercising a muscle I haven't done in a long, long time. Like I used to be so quick with my roto tool, <laughs> you know? Like I could do a character roto in seconds. I would have other editors being like, oh my God, look how fast you are. But not, yeah. not anymore. That was the one every day, and now I don't do it at all. So this this was fun. I think the dimensions broke again. I know. <laughs> I was looking at the Ahsoka one, and now it's Hisoka yeah, that, <laughs> from Hunter Hunter. That would have just <laughs> happened today. All right. Yeah, Andor's down too. Yep. Let's Jake go away from my screen so I can write this down. Yep. All right. Well, that was uh, the website. And if you guys have any questions or any problems, again, you can uh, you can contact uh, the help at 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 blindwave.com at blindwave.com help at blindwave.com so make sure you're doing that um and yeah if you have any more questions make sure you put them down but that's it for the website for now yeah yeah more to come yeah uh all right well what's been going on uh i'm still recovering as many people have asked uh from the ahsoka episode this week i'm not going to be going into spoilers because rick hasn't seen it nope but it was a uh it was a master class. It was an episode of television I've been waiting for quite some time. <laughs> master class of yep. theme and visual storytelling. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've rewatched it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to come in the next week with a back brace on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if I can get one. That I don't me. think even a back brace could contain the hype. <laughs> So yeah, that, I I'm trying to think of like what's my week been like, and I, it's hard not to think of that. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, definitely the high point. I mean, it's called Hump Day, but it's Hump Day. I mean, it was close to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also had some devastating news, or at least some of our Zelda fans had devastating news that there will be no DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, though I respect the answer in that Inuma just said like, I feel like we did it, we're done. I don't think I want to do anymore. <laughs> So I'm like, hey, respect, because I don't know if anybody if anybody that watched my reactions to it, yeah, I'm satisfied. <laughs> um, <laughs> and why is it devastating news, Eric? Well, because I personally, <laughs> like I said a little bit in the stream before this uh, we had today with Nintendo, is that I, do, I was kind of waiting to start a second uh, campaign or a second quest line with the master quests or a, a master mode. Um, so it doesn't look like we're going to get one of those like we did for Breath of the Wild, which just... You know, enemies were much harder, and uh, there was it was just a, a an extra challenge to the game with that. Uh, now, what if that exists and people just haven't found it yet? You never know. <laughs> uh, I've read an interview that uh, Anuma did with NPR today, talking more about how there's no DLC. But he mentioned, like, you know, the the interviewer was like, "So, did you ex- have you seen what people are building?" And he goes, "Yeah." And he's like, "Did you expect people were going to be able to do that?" He's like. We purposely put less Zonai devices in the game so that people couldn't do anything too crazy. And they're going so much crazier than we thought possible. <laughs> and he's like, it's very fun to watch. But like one of the things that they were people have been asking about is like, will a DLC give us more Zonai devices? And Al Numa's like, you want more? Look what they've done. <laughs> <laughs> because people are like, uh, there's people this, are fucking video game engineers. Yeah, like there's a very specific part in the game uh, where there's just like this piece of railing that's on the side of a building. Okay. And people have figured out that if you break that railing off, for some reason, it is so incredibly light compared to all the other structures that look like it. So they're building biplanes and like all this stuff and helicopters that's super, and- super lightweight. Yeah. Also, they're doing this thing called shrine smuggling where some shrines have like special devices in them that you can't find anywhere else. So they're going there, breaking the devices apart, fusing them to their weapons, smuggling them out of the shrine, and then building 
brand new things with them. So Jeez. in the game, you, there's like this power system called like uh, there are these cells that you wear on the, your hip, and the more cells, energy cells that you have, the longer your 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 device can be powered, right? And that's a good way of making sure that you're not just flying all over the game in the beginning. It progresses as you get more energy cells naturally, right? But there's this one shrine that has this like electric powered uh turbine like kind of a fan it's not meant to be a turbine engine people have turned it into a turbine engine and effectively have created electric vehicles <laughs> you know nice. so it's really really cool uh obviously i have uh i've really been enjoying the creativity of the fandom and i mean there's entire like youtube channels now that are just devoted to people sending in their crazy stuff there's a whole subreddit called hyrule engineering that just like challenge themselves to do different things um, and it's really cool, and the life of the game will be extended by stuff like that. I'm just a little disappointed that I won't be able to, again, do a Master Quest, uh, any other type of extra DLC they could have thrown at us in terms of story. I mean, the Breath of the Wild didn't really get the craziest in terms of story DLC. It was uh, the Trials of the Master Sword, but you could have done some stuff like that with Tears of the Kingdom, but... I guess now it just means I can start my second playthrough sooner rather than later. <laughs> Good. And you have some ideas of what you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that was my favorite thing after I got done playing because I, I really tried to stay away from all of the, the discoveries people were making and make it my own, my own quest. But after I got done playing, I got to see all the crazy things people can do uh, with the primary powers that this has especially the ascend ability, which is allows you to ascend to certain things uh, and pass through them. And what people, like, I, I, somebody will just, like, pick up a rock over their head and then quickly ascend through it, and now they're up on top of the rock, and they can jump from there, you know? That's, like, a simple thing. But cool. uh, there's also a rewind ability, so it allows you to rewind the physics of a certain object, uh, like, in the last, I don't know, 30 seconds, let's say. And they're doing crazy stuff like... There's this thing in the game called, you know, Korok challenges. Everybody remembers the Koroks, but there's a specific Korok challenge that appears a lot in this game where you have to take one Korok and get it to its friend that's very far away. And it gives you, you know, there's different terrain types and different challenges getting that Korok to one thing. But people now, what they're doing is they'll activate the Korok that tells you where his friend is. They'll go to his friend. Then they'll just fuse a, a spike to their arrow shoot the spike back to the Korok, fuse him to that spike, and rewind it, done. <laughs> you know, like, I was, I would be doing that, and I'm like, it takes me an hour sometimes. I'm building this giant vehicle to try to get over this thing, and I'm putting this balloon on here, and these people are just done. You know, it's really fun to watch. Uh, the speed runs have been really fun to, to see. So the game definitely is going to have legs for a, a long time, but I, I, it was interesting slash cool to hear that the creators of the game feel pretty satisfied with this iteration of Hyrule and when asked what they're going to do next all they had to say was like we just got to think of what we want players to to experience next time like they, they felt like they've they've done the open world thing so maybe next time we go back to a more conventional item based uh linear thing you know more Ocarina of Time like I won't say no to that but uh I will miss these uh, iterations of the characters. They're other than Link. I mean, Link is, you know, he's always going to be an avatar for the player. So I don't really think of him as a character much. But you know what? No, I'll say it's my favorite iteration of Link too because he went through some stuff. <laughs> but yeah, they're nice. my favorite iteration of the characters so far. And considering it's the twentieth game of the series, I think that's speaking for a lot. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, and a lot of a lot of classics. A lot of classics. <laughs> it's not like, you know, Friday the 13th, which has, yeah. you know, yeah. however many movies, like, yep, Zelda has put out some of the best games ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the highlights of Rick's first playthrough of Ocarina of Time have been going up on Blind Wave Gaming. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, up to with the highlights, you know, we have an editor that's been working on them. He's go getting ready to go into the Water Temple. You had a great time <laughs> in the Water Temple, so... Go check those out. Yeah. You have a, a fun Ahsoka factoid. Sam Regal's wife. From Critical Role, okay. 
Oh, his wife is the director of cinematography on Ahsoka. Uh, on oh, all the, the episodes or three episodes. episodes? Three episodes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Episode five. Wow. That's uh, that's amazing. Um, again, I don't want to go too far into it, but in terms of uh, directing cinematography, especially on something that uh, uses the volume, I think this is, might be the best use of the volume yet. I, the volume, I think, is a fantastic tool. I think that it got a little overused in Mandalorian, uh, and I I believe that that was uh, definitely fixed in Mandalorian Season 3. But, yeah, Ahsoka mixing between real locations and volume locations, I think they've nailed it now in terms of utilization. It's like any, any new piece of technology, right? Visual effects, you know, jumped up in the year 2000, 99 to year 2000, and then we started getting amazing things like Lord of the Rings and the prequel trilogy in terms of, you know, what can you do with visual effects? But also that became a thing. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't use it for everything, you know? The volume goes through uh, a life just like that. So, yeah, this this episode, whoever did the cinematography, and now we know, Sam Regal's wife. Uh, uh, Kuyin Tran. Kuyin Tran, okay. Did a fantastic job with it. I that's how it's pronounced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She did, yeah, incredible work. Yeah. Thank you yep. <laughs> to her. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've I've been enjoying the uh, the Star Wars series uh vast differences in how the productions work. Like the Obi-Wan series definitely I mean on purpose slash I know some people didn't love it, but it was meant to feel like smaller. Like Obi-Wan in his mind is is mm-hmm. not who he used to be. It's not as grand. Like he is this old aging man in the middle of an oil field, you know, like yeah. he's not going to be on the, and the he's side trying, of this giant vista with, yeah. you know, with whales flying overhead. He's you know trying what I'm saying? to hide. Yeah. You know, whereas Andor, Andor is way more grounded and they use location work in their production like so much. I, I know that at the very least tourism in the UK has jumped up since Andor started doing some stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of their like more realistic grounded uh, location work, and I feel like Ahsoka is kind of mixing all of those lessons learned together in a, in a really, really cool way. So that's not just one person, but director of cinematography. Uh huh. That's gonna be great. Yeah, collaborative effort, but yeah, all the collaboration has been a plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, make sure you guys are getting your questions in too, because we'll we'll have some questions here. Uh, at, towards the end of podcasts. So get those in. Any topics that you guys want us to cover. Uh, what else did we have today? Anybody? As far as topics? Yeah. Um, the thing about podcasts, sometimes I prepare, sometimes I just like to sit down and talk. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt like there was something I was going to talk about, and I don't have anything. Yeah. In Only we head. took notes in our real life like we did in reactions. Sure. Then we would never forget anything. Funnily enough, I I do take Oh, yeah, the thing that's been taking all What's of been consuming your life, Calvin? Baldur's Gate three. Baldur's Gate three. Yeah. Hyperfixation and it's just scratching that D and D itch. Yeah? Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. <laughs> I bought it. Um, I know nothing about this game other than I saw somebody say, like, this is the best game ever. This genie turned me into cheese. That's all I saw. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I haven't got there yet, but yeah. I've I've heard easily as shocking things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I bought it. Um, let's see. This, tomorrow will be two weeks ago, and I usually only play it, like, for a few hours in the afternoon, and I'm, uh, I think I'm at sixty hours now. Okay, just from two weeks of playing, so that really? tells you how yeah much I've been playing. Um, doing a uh, a two player game with Carmen. Okay, it's been a lot of fun. Now, when um, you play a game like that, Calvin, do you role play yourself, or do you create a completely different character from yourself? When I'm playing a character like that, like I. I try to do like just a different character. Yeah. That I can be like, well, this character doesn't 
want to do that, so he's going to kill this guy. Or, like, he does want to do that, so he's going to protect this person. Yeah. So I kind of, I can kind of, like, instill some of my own morals Mm -hmm. into the character, but also it's just fun to be a bad guy, too. That's true. Yeah. So I I definitely, when I was younger, I feel like I did more, I'm going to make this me. Yeah. But the older I get, the more I'm like, I don't. I, mean, I love me. But maybe <laughs> but I just I don't want to play wanna as me. Be me anymore. I don't want to be me now. <laughs> I'm me all the time. Yeah. I definitely did that when I was playing Hogwarts Legacy. And the first character that I rolled, uh, it was primarily me. Yeah. You know, like it placed me in Ravenclaw. Uh, or I guess I picked Ravenclaw because I thought, well, that'd be an interesting one. But I, for some reason, like maybe it was just because I selected the male character and I found the voice work to be way too close to Harry. To Daniel Radcliffe, Harry, you know, yeah, that in the middle of that run, I just abandoned it and rolled a new one, and I I created a a Slytherin girl, a witch, yeah, and I had so much more fun playing a bad character, yeah, <laughs> um, that you know likes people, but also if you fuck with her, she knows unforgivable curses, yeah. and it and it doesn't feel weird, <laughs> yeah, like it did for my other character, so. Yeah, that one really opened my eyes in terms of like I'm just not I'm just going to do something completely different. I had way more fun even replaying the stuff I had already done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Baldur's Gate three for people who aren't familiar, mm-hmm. it's um uh, CRPG. It's sort of I haven't got a chance to play it yet, but um it it seems like the culmination of the CRPG in some ways. Yeah, where it's um like turn based tactical combat. Um, once you get into the actual combat stuff, yeah. But like, there's just a lot of, a lot of room for role playing, and you know all the things you can expect from an RPG. Um, but it it just seems like it has sort of almost perfected that. And uh, that team, I felt like almost perfected that with their last game, Divinity Two, which yeah. I have played through yeah. to completion, and just like. Like I played that, and I was like, "Man, like I'm never going to be able to look at another RPG the same way again because, the, like, they're all just going to not reach this level." Yeah, and it's awesome to hear that it seems like they surpassed it, but also further ruined other <laughs> yeah. RPGs for me. Maybe it's sure. like, "Dang!" So it wasn't lightning in a bottle. All these other games just suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is um, based on the D and D five E rule set, mm-hmm. um, much like the Baldur's Gate games of the past with. Um, uh, 3e so if you do know that it does um, use that system but if you don't it's because it is a computer game you don't have to go and look up rule books or anything like yeah like all the math and things handled directly in the game um sure. and, and it certainly seems like the kind of game where you don't need to min max to succeed you can kind of just pick things that seem fun and kind of make it through that way uh which is not the case for divinity 2 yeah because <laughs> in divinity 2 uh so, uh, some of those bosses are real, real hard. What's the uh, respecking like in in Baldur's um, Gate? Respecking, uh, it's pretty easy. It definitely, like, if you don't have your character built well, you will suffer. Okay, it will it will be much harder to actually do stuff. But, um, as far as like wanting to change your character, I mean, you can re-roll your character. And turn into a completely different class and put new items on and okay. and just completely completely change your play style on uh kind of on the fly. And at but, least uh, in Divinity there were oftentimes creative solutions to problems. So like, you know, it you could teleport yourself or enemies around and like sometimes you could deal with things a little easier that way, even if you weren't specced to maybe handle that encounter otherwise, if you could like Look at the tools you had available to you. You could come up with a solution. A lot no, of definitely. There's, there's been several fights that Carmen and I have had where we get absolutely wrecked, flattened <laughs> in like the first two to three rounds of combat, and then we, we go back and we're like, okay, what didn't work? What worked? And like, what things in the environment did we not know about before we entered combat? And then yeah. usually. It- we approach it from a, a much different angle, mm-hmm. and we usually take it in the first try after that. Yeah, so. it's, it's kind of got the XCOM thing going on. Yeah. Where, like, once you know what's going to happen, then you can prepare for that. But, like, if it catches you unawares, then things go real bad yeah. real fast. 
I do like having having the ability to like you know know a bit about what's gonna happen like from from a failure point of view, but also things can just change drastically like if you forget to do something if a door is unlocked where it wasn't before you know if you're just a few feet closer to the other enemies that didn't hear you last time you tried it like you can have a whole lot more people or you know people coming from different directions or something you didn't even know about before Hmm. it's it's a lot of fun is there any word because i know divinity 2 had a, a game master mode where um you could basically run a dnd style campaign within the game itself so like you could create your own levels, you could put the enemies like Um I I don't know. I haven't looked into it a whole lot because I don't want like spoilers or anything yeah. like that. And it, it's so difficult to find out about features of the game without knowing about things that happen later on that allow you to use those features, but I don't believe there is. Chess says no GM mode. Yeah, uh, no no we'll, GM. We'll, it does have extensive yeah. mod support. Which I don't think uh I don't think GM mode was in Divinity at launch either, so it maybe is something. But like, I'm I'm sure as popular as the game is, someone is going to make a GM mod because it's except for the auto pathing, everything else is is what I would want from a tabletop RPG. Yeah, pretty much. Like I can't talk to the game and say, "Hey, I want to do this." Sure. How can I make that happen? <laughs> and then the game says. Roll these dice and tell me what you get, and it and it either does or doesn't happen. But but there's a lot of things that you can do that you know you really can't do in like Skyrim or something like that. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Like like I said, when I played Divinity Two, I was like, "Yep, this is like like what I want these type of RPGs to be." Um, and I mean that's also kind of true with the older. Uh, uh, Baldur's Gates as well, and Neverwinter Nights, and all that stuff. But um, it's cool. It, is this the first style of those games that you've gotten into? Yeah. Okay. Nice. It's, it seems like a good one, and it seems like it's selling super well. Yeah, it's um, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like I, the, re- the replayability of it as well is insane. Because there's, I I forget what Jake was saying the other day. I think he was guessing around 1700 different combinations of uh like gameplay and results at the end or, or something like that like like you can have a character that the game plans for you to have as a companion and you can just kill him when you meet him and yeah. then that character and all those plot lines just don't exist anymore yeah that was true with divinity as well <laughs> yeah. um no, I, I hope this sort of spurs on a new CRPG renaissance because it seemed like I would love that we had, um, you know, we had the original Baldur's Gates, we had um, the old like Fallout's, um, Planescape Torment, and like it was just sort of some of the best video games were of that genre. But then let's say Neverwinter Nights maybe was kind of the last one, and then I feel like it just sort of dried up after that. Yeah. And um, oh, I'm sorry, it was seventeen thousand. 17,000. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like, you know, occasionally here and there, um, uh, there was something, uh, uh, someone mentioned uh, Dragon Age, which uh, I would say falls into that. Mm-hmm. But it it just didn't seem like we were getting what we used to get. So I, I hope that this is, that this shows that that kind of game can be successful and brings it back. Yeah. No, I, I would definitely be all for that. I, uh, I mean, like like I said, I don't have a whole lot of experience with this style of game. I usually go in for not turn-based combat, yeah. but this is the kind of turn-based combat that I deeply love because of playing it on tabletop, you know? And yeah, if you are looking for more, I can recommend Divinity 2, but um, as like a single-player story experience, I think Planescape Torment might be the most interesting one um, in terms of what it does with that story and what it does with that character. <laughs> Planescape Torment. Planescape Torment, yeah. Which okay. um, uh, Planescape is another like uh, Dungeon Dragons um system. Okay. Um. So it's that sort of thing, but it, it's just a super interesting story and characters. Cool. I have to assume, with all that information that you guys just put out there, that I don't need to play Baldur's Gate one or two. No, <laughs> no, okay. they're they're. 
they're like standalone. similar systems, gotcha. but they're yeah. different. I understand. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Baldur's Gate is a land. Right? Okay. Gotcha. Uh, we, Not a character. Well, we went to Baldur's Gate in the D&D movie, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah. No. Yeah. No? Didn't we? I didn't that do That was Neverwinter, but they mentioned Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a reference from the movie that went over my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's just uh, like that's another game to add on the pile of what's going to be game of the year this year. Yeah. Cause... Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> it makes me worried because I just, this is really selfish of me, but I want to hear an orchestra on stage do the Zelda theme. <laughs> 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 you know, I want that. I want them to have like, uh, an Uru player from Japan come out and rock that on stage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's so many great ones now, so I gotta be worried. <laughs> and I do understand some people's uh, uh, criticism that's like, well, it, it really is based on Breath of the Wild, so if you didn't like that, do you like this one? I'm like, I, I, mean, I, I think it fixed a lot of stuff, but it is effectively the same world, just with a little extra. <laughs> That's also the Yakuza series. The and, Yakuza series. Okay. Um, like, I would recommend that to anyone. Gotcha. Because, like, like, when you do that and you don't have to rebuild everything from scratch, mm-hmm. you can push things further and further. Yeah. I feel like. And just, like, I, I don't mind um, reused assets mm. in, okay. in sequels. Yeah. No, that was the, the cool thing about it for me was... Uh, like, if I were to get a new game that had the same world as Ocarina of Time, like, that would be great for me because I know the game so well, anything different becomes huge for me. And there was a lot different in Tears of the Kingdom. Has anybody played Starfield yet? I own it. You own it? Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. I, <laughs> Did you play it? <laughs> I pre-ordered it. Yeah. And... I, I knew it was going to take all of my time, and mm-hmm. it just so happened that I got Baldur's to playing Gate got Baldur's first. Gate first. Oh, and okay. I, you know, hyperfixation is what it is. I, I have to play that. Sure. Yeah, that's what my brain wants. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shogun, me, uh, I, I love Sleeping Dogs, and I wish they made a sequel. That's a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I've, uh, for me, when it comes to Starfield... Um, when I played Skyrim, I was like, man, there's so much of this I love, but there's so much that I don't, and it's so close to what I want. Gotcha. And then I played Divinity 2, and I was like, this is exactly what I want. Yeah. So f- from- Did you ever get into like the mod community with Skyrim? I knew a lot of people Absolutely. changed their stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, w- I went in and like, like messed around with those tools. Sweet. Like, made some quests and stuff, but... Um, but from what I've seen about Starfield, it seems like more of that kind mm-hmm. of game. So it sort of... Bethesda made a Bethesda game? Yeah. yeah. Which... Not shocking. It, in some ways, <laughs> like, man, it seems really cool. And yeah. like like that first like 10 hours of Skyrim, I was super into it. Yeah. And like, I kind of want to try it to just feel that again. But mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm worried that I'm just going to see all the things that I saw in Skyrim and okay. be like, ah, this just doesn't do it for me. Gotcha. I don't know. I'm I'm iffy. Iffy. It's been for me as an outsider looking in on that uh, that fandom. Like I have seen like reviews that just vary so wildly. Like, this is the worst, and it's nothing like they said it was going to be. Another person being like, "Well, what they said it was going to be is perfect." You know? Like <laughs> I'm like, "Well, I don't understand who to listen to." I guess I should just play, but I got to play Baldur's Gate three. I guess that one sounds way more hype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely. Having not played either, yeah. uh, I think Baldur's Gate Three is the better video game. Sure. <laughs> One thing that I'm very excited by uh, coming up is in October. At the end of October, uh, my wife and I just, you know, uh, purchased a home, a new house, and I'm very excited to get into it and start, you know, working on it and all that. But one of the things I want to do eventually in the next in the first year is. I've I haven't had like a real like gaming space mm. for myself in a while. I play on the Switch and I play here, yeah. But at the house that I'm at right now, I don't have like a we I should say, my wife and I don't have like a gaming space. I wanna I wanna do that and really just Oh, okay. Not, 
I thought you meant Nintendo Wii. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I was like, no. Wii, you don't but, play a Wii here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, uh, both of us. Um, you know, there's just I feel like over the last 10, 15 years, I've just like have let my pile of like what's the right word? Like, what do they call it when you like? Well, obviously, you need to read that book. It's required. Required yeah. reading. Like, mm-hmm. I have a lot of required reading games I've missed over yep. the years. Some of it that's, you know, like Mass Effect that I'll stream, and some of it, you know, that I might just do on my own. But I'm very excited to, to get into that and pick up some of these older games. Yeah. And not think about the stuff I've missed because Backlog. I, can never get, I can never do it now, you know? Like there's some Mario games that I can't play because I didn't get it in the three months it was available. Oh, <laughs> the worst thing Nintendo's ever done. Yeah, that's so dumb. <laughs> I understand the... That you're trying to promote sales with FOMO, but come on, not in video games. So many people work so hard on that stuff, and now they their work can't be used. I don't know. I don't like it. Well, if you do, if you do FOMO, do like a special edition. Yeah, that can only be had. Right? Or like you know, yeah, like some special little things that I don't know. I get you, but still allow the game to be, you know, acquired. Yeah. Yep. Would love to do a four-player stream of us playing Baldur's Gate, but it would take so long. It would take a really long time. How long are we talking? A hundred hours, I would say. At least, probably. Well, we do that two hours a week. <laughs> 50 weeks, that's a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would be down, but two hours a week, I don't know if that's enough. Yeah. Well, how about this? How about like you play two hours a week for the first quarter, and then I'll just take your character and completely ruin it, change it, oh, man. do all that stuff, and then Rick takes mine. Dwarf Fortress And style. then we just do like a tele- game of telephone. Calvin eventually takes it over again. <laughs> My favorite thing to do in Dwarf Fortress, yeah. where you run it, the Fortress for a season, and then you hand it off to someone else. That's cool. Hmm. That would mean no smash. Yeah, you're right, Diggus Biggus. We need to smash. So... Someone asked me earlier, Eric, did you really change your, your main? Well, yes, I did. That yes. was my main it was it's because true. Because of yep. Tears of the Kingdom. Yep. I've been watching a, uh, a pro Smash player called Vin, who's taking Zelda to these very high-level tournaments. And I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning from Vin. Though, I don't think I'll ever be as shitty as he is with his Phantom Knight. <laughs> He's real shitty. <laughs> Aaron level? Uh, No. Not that shitty. Real <laughs> shitty, but not that shitty. <laughs> I mean, he still has some respect, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, that thing we were doing, Calvin, when Jake was speaking and you had to say what Jake was speaking so that it wasn't any de- dead air, did you ever you ever see Mike Rowe do that? Mike Rowe? Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. No. He can have an earpiece in and a person can just be talking and he can just say what they're saying without interrupting, with having perfect inflection. It's just a, a skill slash talent he has. I've never seen anybody else do it ever but Mike Rowe. I yeah. think uh, I've heard that as well. Yeah, I think the only other people are WWE commentators. Because, oh, yeah? Because Vince McMahon is always in their ear all the time. Is he? Yeah. Now, here's a transition. I ha- What's going on with WWE and UFC? Have you seen? Apparently they have merged together. Oh yeah, that happened a while ago. Okay, yeah. I only just saw the the articles come out. But I was like, I got to talk to Rick. Yeah, I can't trust these articles. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Vince sold it. Basically, they merged together. Um, he is in control of WWE, and oh, he's still in control. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and is a I forget what percentage, but like he's a percentage shareholder in the entire company as a whole. Hmm. But he is uh, the majority when it comes to like the WWE side of things. So. Gotcha. Now, I mean, there's been, uh, you know, I mean, it's been for a long time, but, you know, Brock Lesnar famously went from one to another. Do mm-hmm. you think that this is going to encourage that happening more often? And does that hurt the brand of each one if that happens? You know, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I don't not know. WWE, but UFC, I can see people being like, oh, yeah, that guy's a wrestler. Well, it's been a, like, it's happened um, since MMA has been a thing. Yeah. Like we've had it back and forth, like Ken Shamrock, mm-hmm. um, Dan Severin, stuff like that. Um, recently, like CM Punk tried to make the transition and tried, yep. it wasn't successful. Mm-hmm. Ronda Rousey, sure, yeah, she went the other way. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's possible. I I know um, originally, uh, 
like back in the what would have been the early 90s i think um mm-hmm. vince mcmahon was starting a bodybuilding promotion and he wanted that to be a crossover thing okay where it was like bodybuilders but also wrestlers gotcha. and like the bodybuilders had characters and sometimes they would come on the wrestling show and things like that so like i mean it would make sense like i think that there's a lot of overlap in that market but i okay. i don't think it's a complete overlap Sure. Right? Between UFC and WWE. So. I, mean, I, th- I think it makes sense in terms of like uh, being able to share resources when it comes to venues, when it comes to you know all of the stuff around the sport, right? It has yeah. to be pretty similar. Uh, like, and talent. Mm-hmm. Business model wise, right? Yeah. And like streaming stuff. Streaming. Yeah. Um, like video production. I'm sure a lot of that stuff carries over. Yeah. For sure. I just would love like eventually like... Someone gets a, like their schedule wrong, and they think they're going in for <laughs> WWE, but it's UFC. And it's like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> they just get their ass kicked. Oh, I'm in the wrong. I came to the wrong building. <laughs> I wonder which uh, which industry has more injuries. Oh man, um, um, because I don't like know. It, like in UFC, you're not fighting every week. No, you know? like there's time oh yeah, yeah. You have fights. longer breaks in between and things. And you have, you have people that will actually stop the fight. Well, most of the time, most if, the time. if well, there's yeah. Well, like there's a, also there's the there's the funny business when it comes to making weight, right? Because yeah. you have people dehydrating themselves, yep. doing all Cooking these crazy things to do it. A, Whereas a WWE, oven. it's like yeah, they're the same, but maybe you shouldn't have Big Show fighting Rey Mysterio, but it's fun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but UFC has the. The kind of uncomfortable question of like, are is what they're doing healthy? Yeah. I don't know, but they're making weight. Yeah, like it, it's better nowadays. But yeah. like the the WWE schedule used to be just so relentless, mm-hmm. and the ring was so unforgiving yeah. that like people would just have all these pain problems and everything. I have to say, uh, one of my favorite YouTube videos I've watched this year was a WWE video of the Undertaker and Mick Foley reacting to slash commentary to their Hell in a Cell match. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've watched that match and been like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. But once I heard from their point of view why, no, you don't understand why it's even crazier, um, yeah, a lot of respect to, I'm going to have to say, maybe the WWE people do get themselves hurt more because they can have a longer life while hiding invisible injuries, you know? Yeah. Like, it's crazy what Mick Foley did. And like you know, Undertaker's talking about like, dude, we gotta stop this. And no, keep going. Get to the tax. <laughs> the tax. <laughs> we gotta get to the tax. The thumb tax. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you would never have that match again in today's WWE. No, like they are better at not. stopping things when yeah. people get injured. And like if people start bleeding, yeah. like they'll stop and stop them bleeding and things like sure. that. Sure. But um, but yeah, like that that match is so crazy. And Mick doesn't remember most of it. Yep. <laughs> Which I can certainly understand why. But, you know, my yeah. favorite, I mean, it's not its not great, but The Undertaker just watching and being like, oh, Mick, oh, God, buddy, you are so <laughs> effing tough. <laughs> you know? The Undertaker called me tough. <laughs> He's like shuddering yeah. <laughs> at the yeah. things that he put him through. Yep. What a, you know, I obviously I, I try to filter all of the wrestling news that I hear through, through Rick. Uh, I know that you're not always into it as much now but what was going on with cm punk and aew that's the big news story now yeah certainly what in wrestling so there's been backstage problems with cm punk and some other like wrestlers uh in aew for a, a while problems um yeah just like you know like ego stuff like i think mostly ego stuff and um just like picking at each other in the promos and stuff like that. Okay. And it got to the point where um, AEW, um, so they had Dynamite on Wednesdays. Okay. And they started a new show called uh, Rampage. Okay. And basically they split the roster. Uh, so like Rampage was going to be CM Punk and people he would work with. And Dynamite was going to be the other people. Gotcha. Kind of. Okay. Um, Like one Game of Thrones when... Uh, Braun and Cersei couldn't be in the same scenes because those two yeah. actors had dated and don't like each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So, you know, there was um, a backstage fight um, um, between Punk and some of his people and some other wrestlers. Like a fight fight, real fight. A real fight, yeah. Mm, okay. 
uh, which happened a few months back, I think, M- maybe even going on to a year at this point. It, yeah. It seems like it's been forever. Okay. But, um, you know, there was that, and there wasn't a lot of, like, disciplinary stuff for that, and there hasn't been, like, a lot of management really putting their foot down on this okay. stuff, and it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. Sure. And then recently, um, Jungle Boy Jack Perry and uh, CM Punk had an altercation uh, backstage right before CM Punk was going out for his match. Okay. And um, I'm not sure of the details exactly, but I know Tony Khan, Khan um, the owner of AEW, hmm. um, released a statement saying, like, they um, basically fired CM Punk. And um, yeah. in his statement, he said, like, you know, during that, like, he feared for his life. Really? Kind of thing. So, like... Huh. Jeez. That's still really disappointing. Okay. Uh, so, like, somehow maybe the fight spilled over and, like, you know, went towards him or got him involved. I'm not exactly sure. But, um, hmm. yeah, for, for now, at least uh, CM Punk is no longer in AEW. And he's not in uh, a part of any wrestling thing right now that gotcha. I'm aware of. So. Hmm. That sucks to hear. Uh, one of my, you know, I don't really get into wrestling all that much, but in the time period that I did watch wrestling, I feel like a lot of those guys have kind of gone more on the con circuit and they're getting on the podcast and they're really kind of like pulling back the curtain on a lot of stuff that used to happen back then. And it really felt, I mean, I don't know all the details, but it did feel like there was like a, a real sense of like community and that our fights happen out there, but back here, like we're, you know, we're putting on a show. And I'm sure it, it's, it depends. It like, um, you know, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Well, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, famously have had their scuttles and uh-huh. things. Um, there's always been a lot of like bullying behind the scenes of gotcha. wrestling back in the day. Um, mm. um, you know, between like fighting and hazing and like different things like that. And, Certainly, when like um, the invasion was originally happening, when WWE brought bought WCW and a bunch mm-hmm. of those wrestlers came in, there was a lot of animosity. That makes a lot of sense. To, I mean, sure, to direct wrestlers. competitors. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so it hasn't always been, you know. Gotcha. A bed of roses for everything, but well, at, I'm for one am shocked to hear that giant testosterone filled men sometimes don't get along. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> sometimes they hash it out because I know yeah. like Mick Foley and Ric Flair had beef for a long time. Really? Because um, Ric Flair came out saying like he didn't like Mick's style of wrestling. He didn't think it was a very good wrestler. Yeah. Um, but like eventually they kind of hashed it out and are gotcha. friends now. So. Okay. That's crazy because I think Mick is one of the best. <laughs> I mean, he's different, right? Like he is a man who understands his weaknesses yeah. and he mm-hmm. plays to his strengths. Yeah. The thing that exactly. I love about him is that he just seems like a guy. Yeah. You know, like you look at Hulk Hogan, I don't go like, there's a normal man, <laughs> you know, but Mick Foley just seems like a guy. He's like, I could see him like at the Parmar down the street, you know? Sure. Yeah. You know, buying a, a like a 12 pack or something. But uh, I, I don't, you know, I obviously don't know the man and I haven't seen all of his stuff, but the stuff I have seen just like the punishment he put on his body that everyone around him was like this is too much you know is yeah. crazy and you know god bless dime dallas page but mick was in real rough shape for a while physically yeah. Yeah. and um he said ddp yoga has helped him tremendously that's awesome yeah, yeah. like uh, i um had seen his show um a few years ago mm-hmm. and like you know he could barely walk really um but i've seen videos of him recently and he's getting around a cool. lot better now yeah. that's good all right and yeah, Mick Foley always reminded me of uh, Frank Dukes' friend from Bloodsport. Uh, yeah, hmm. sure. <laughs> I can see it. Which, speaking of, um, he, that character kind of reminds me of um, uh, Jim Duggan, who was recently ho- uh, uh, was recently hospitalized. Oh, yeah. So he, he seems to be recovering now, so that's good. Um, and then the other sad wrestling news is um, Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt passed away. Okay. Who uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but yeah. he's a, a a recent wrestler who has been, you know, very popular, a lot yeah. of great character work. Um, was only in his 30s, um, but dang, uh, I, b- I believe it was a heart issue. Gotcha. And um, recently passed away. That's very I, sad. Uh, yeah, that sucks. 
I recently was watching a, I think it was a compilation of the Graham Norton show, which I think is one of the best talk shows I've ever seen, <laughs> you know, oh, in terms yeah. of the way they do their format. It's certainly, I think, something that survives the uh, the transition to online content from other talk shows. You know, late night is dead in America, in my opinion. Um, but he had John Cena on the couch and uh, Matthew McConaughey. Whoa. Which that's my favorite part about that show is just the like mix. Yeah, you don't you yeah. don't have just like four yeah. people from the same movie. Yeah. that have spent the last and, two years together. Yeah. It's just people who who uh-huh. have met for the first time on this stage. Yeah, and Matthew McConaughey just like geeks out about like South Texas professional re- wrestling with him, mm. and it was just so cute to see this like <laughs> little boy talk about. Yeah, and he's like, you know, there was this guy that you know, like he could like hypnotize you, and he talked to snakes, you know, like all this really really funny stuff. But uh, it was just really cool to see him like, you know, I never expected Matthew McConaughey to be like hardcore pro wrestler, like, but you know, indie wrestling, not like the the mainstream stuff. It was really interesting to see those two very unlikely people geek out about something. Well, yeah, when he was a kid, it was probably still the territories, right? Yeah, probably. So he watched his local wrestling. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And I didn't hear the story of John Cena, how this became a thing, how it was effectively a dare <laughs> and it changed his life. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Graham and Conan are the best. Yeah. But Conan has uh, moved on to podcasting right now. Um, which I've been listening to his podcast. It's called Conan O'Brien. Uh, Here's a friend. If uh, if you want a good one to start with, the Harrison Ford episode was fantastic. Oh. I've never seen Harrison Ford more comfortable. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I also Check the thing out. I love about the podcast so much is like I n- personally never realized how utterly intelligent Conan O'Brien is. He's like. A straight up intellectual, he's and he's, he's been masquerading as a goofus <laughs> for twenty five years. Yeah. You know, but like he is so intelligent, it's crazy. So it's a really fun podcast. But I also I incredibly miss like when it used to be called like Conan Travels, where he would just take a camera crew somewhere. You know, like the first one I remember ever watching is he went to like an old timey baseball game where they yeah. were like acting as if it was you know the nineteen tens or whatever. And he had this giant fake mustache on, and they, you know, it was very fun. But from what I understand, Conan is, they're producing a new series that is just Conan Travels. Oh, so it's not the late night anymore, but it's just that. It's not a segment, it's yeah. an entire show. But if you ever want to fall down like a, a, a YouTube rabbit hole, like uh, I often fall down the Who's Line rabbit hole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Conan Travels rabbit hole is one of the top rabbit holes you can get into. So if you've never done that, check it out. There's some or, really cool or stuff. Or bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was deep. But I, I always enjoy that. So, yeah, like I said, like late night TV, I feel like is the internet has kind of destroyed it. Like even SNL, like have you? when's the last time you sat down to watch an episode of SNL? I might watch the best ones on Sunday, you know, uh, but I don't watch it anymore. And it's the same thing with for me, it's, the Tonight uh, Show and like Colbert and like game shows. Like I used yeah. to watch game shows a lot growing yeah. up, but now I just kind of catch highlights. Sure, yeah, yeah. just like the best segments. Yeah. Mm. Part of that's also I just I can't stand commercials anymore. Yeah, oh, I understand yeah. that. Like because of streaming and because of like YouTube Premium and stuff, I just yep. haven't had ads in so yep. long. I, I I can't go back. Yeah, yep. um, I am much the same way. Yeah, Calvin, because you couldn't remember his name earlier, I will say that Harry Mack. Has no, the best commercials. Somebody, somebody said it in in chat, yeah, that, and you were, sorry, you were yeah. on a roll, so I didn't, <laughs> I didn't say it. But uh, but he's a he he's a freestyle uh, rapper, Rick. Okay, and it, it's you know I've I've always been fascinated by freestyle artists. Yeah, just you know because yeah, I mean you need to have you need to have a good flow. You need to be able to keep the beat, but you have to also think outside of your current spot. You have to, you know, you have to. It's like a chess thing. You have to be working on your moves while you're actively Making saying the, the things happening yeah. there. And I've always been fascinated by that. And I've always thought it's like, man, this is such a skill. Like, and I think that someone like Harry Mack is might be the best to have ever lived. And he just not only that, but I think that he is a fantastic YouTuber. Like his thumbnails are fantastic. His frequency of uploads are great. Uh, he's a really positive guy. Uh, 
You know, like he could be the best battle rapper to ever live, but he doesn't like to do it because he's too nice. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't uh, want to diss anybody. Yeah, but my favorite thing about him is when you watch, like, you know, he'll uh, he'll go on Omegle and just try to randomly find people, and they'll give you know words, three words, and he'll create a rap out of it, or uh, you know, say something that's important to you, he'll create a rap out of it. But he doesn't just do the word like in a rhyme. He'll make an entire song about one word and then move on. But he'll have like. Keeps as a sponsor, right? Uh, keep your hair, right? Okay. He'll just do an improv rap for it as as the commercial. Like it's the first time on a YouTube video I don't actively skip the commercials. I, my favorite YouTubers. I, once the commercial starts, I start hitting that. You know, getting over to the you know, yeah. waiting for the next one. Harry Mack, I'll rewatch the commercial sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the only commercials I watch these days. No, I have to check him out. Yeah. Now he. Uh, he does a great series called uh, Omega Bars, I think it's called, where he goes on Omega. And then there's also a series where he'll just, right now, he's just traveling the world on his tour. It, the The show that he puts on is fantastic. What he does is when you enter into the venue, there's a, a, a special QR code. You download that, and that way you can literally put start putting words and themes and stuff, and they'll just pop up on the screen, and he'll every single show is completely unique because of it huh. it's a really really cool uh artist and a really really interesting business model like uh, you know that that type of music i feel like hasn't been able to find a find a way to support those artists into a career you know yeah i mean it, usually you get like local scenes but i mean he's doing it on a gigantic platform and i just i i love to see people succeed and every time someone's like, how do you do that? And he'll just, his answer is like, well, I've been practicing for 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> huh. But yeah, it's a, it's a really cool, really cool YouTube channel. Check that out as well. And I can't shut up about it. <laughs> That's your fixation. Yeah. No, I, I think I've said it too much and now Aaron hates it. Harry hates it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that and you claim that I've been infected with Star Wars knowledge. You have been infected with Star Wars knowledge. You've been getting getting pretty good. We had a character in a show called Jucasta. Calvin goes, Jucasta knew? <laughs> I'm like, the librarian of the Jedi Archives? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of you, my son. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun. Well, I'm sure we had some uh, questions come in uh, since we Last asked for them, and we got about a half hour left in the show. All right. Well, let's see. I've got one from Robo Rex. Sorry for personal question, but why does Rick wear sunglasses in reactions? Again, don't mean any disrespect. Just curious. Um, so it's to change the light color and also to dim them somewhat. Yeah. Uh, I have um sensory sensitivity to things like. I mean, all of them, but the ones that affect me most at work are sound. So I wear earplugs and uh, lights. So I um, wear the glasses mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, let's see. This is Go Master. What kids' cartoon shows you watched as a kid you would like to see in live action? Ooh, in live action. Interesting. Um, hmm. Gargoyles. Gargoyles. <laughs> Gargoyles would be fun. Live action. We've seen Ben 10 know. in live action. Yeah, and we've seen Ben glorious. 10. I don't want to do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. um. Okay. Okay. Let me switch mm. my monitor then. Dang. Man, I'm trying to think. I didn't um, watch many cartoons as a kid and any cartoons that I watched as a kid would just suffer from live action like Wile E. Coyote can't be done it's jackass right <laughs> well <laughs> no <laughs> this meme is funny by the way <laughs> I like it good job this meme is funny um no can't do that one like it they have to stay in cartoon form. Like, if you did Rugrats in live action, it would be terrible. Like, yeah, it would be it like, would no, be. these babies, you it know, would be they're grotesque. in such danger. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. 
I mean, did you watch Baby Days Days Out? What's, what's it called? Baby's, Baby's Day, Day Out. Out. I guess that's as close to Rugrats as we can get, but that's it's a little anxiety inducing for me. Dex's Laboratory. That's a good idea. Youthful Eagle. Courage the Cowardly Dog. I would watch that. Yeah. <laughs> but like a real dog, not a CG dog, yeah, a real, real dog. dog. And let a trainer get that dog to do the stuff that he needs to do. Could be fun. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, I mean, yeah, I I suppose it's Dev. He said Clone Wars in live action. <laughs> <laughs> sure, just more of the same. Well, yeah, I'm. I get I'm you. I'm very with, satisfied with I'm, Clone Wars yeah. animation. So, I mean, <laughs> if it happened, would I watch it? Sure, but I'd rather. There's like a thousand other things I'd rather see. I think when in Star Wars universe. <laughs> Why? Why Forrest Gump? Why is it Forrest Gump? <laughs> That's funny. Um, Dylan Chip asked if we've thought about having recommendations separated between movies and shows. Uh, we have. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that's possible. Um, so we're using, um, in order to get all those movies and shows, uh, we're u- utilizing an API. And I'm, it, maybe, but it certainly wouldn't be anytime soon. Uh, Sarah Jane, I recently got into the survival show alone, immediately thought Calvin could win this. If any of you were on it, how long do you think you'd last? I love alone. I love that show. Um, hey, I'm not saying I'd win, but I wouldn't punk out on the first day like some of these people. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right? You know? They haven't even gone through their fat reserves yet. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to last, you know? My favorite one, uh, I don't know what... Se- I, I, I binged them all, so I don't know the seasons or anything. But there's one guy that literally just hibernated like a bear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he there you go. people. But they had to... I think they had to pull him out because he lost too much weight. Well, yeah. But he literally, like, he got all those food reserves, and then he just made, like, a den and slept all day, all night. That's all you, he did. You can do that. It was nuts. I would not do that, but it was nuts. But uh, I don't know. Uh, doesn't make for a very interesting TV show. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, I that, it's, it's a fun show. I don't think I would last. I certainly wouldn't go past a month. I don't. I just don't think I can no. do it. Uh, so uh, is this like a a camping sort of thing? Yes. Yeah, so alone is you are given a I don't know four or five square mile grid where. You know, you're put into a, a an environment and you just have to survive. You know, there every once in a while, depending on the environment, there are certain limitations. There are like certain animals that you can't do anything with because sure. they're endangered. Um, but yeah, you're pretty much you're given like a list of ten things you can bring with you. That can be a ferro rod for fire. That can be a sleeping bag. That can be a good pair of shoes. That can be a a good book. <laughs> yeah, a, a saw, something yeah. like that. But you get to choose those things. And you do have safety check-ins, and you have a radio. And at any point, you can just radio in and say, I'm done. Yeah. And they go until they're done. And the last person gets a million dollars or whatever, right? And you have no access to the other contestants, right? You do not have access to the other contestants. No. Though there have been seasons where they've, like, sometimes they have interacted slash, like, formed teams and try to, like, steal shit from other people, you know? Okay. But I don't like those seasons as much. I personally like the... The inner challenge yeah. of man versus wild, uh, but I mean, I think it's a it's a cool f- a thought experiment. But I bet you, once you're like two weeks in, you're gonna be missing some very vital things like running Boiler water paper. and plumbing because <laughs> you know they do have a safety check. But that I mean, there was one guy that two bears. We're right outside, and he couldn't even like move in order to call for help, you know. And there's nothing you can do. Yeah, I, you know, bears will get you, <laughs> and you can't fight back. Really, no. They can some of swim them swim faster than you. They yeah. can climb faster than you. They can run faster than you, yeah. and they can throw you way <laughs> further than you can throw yeah. them. <laughs> if you have bear spray, congratulations, you have like twenty percent more likely to live if they attack you. You know, sure. So yeah. Um, but it's like, a very all, fun. All that's going yeah. to happen is the bear is going to be slightly angrier when yeah. he kills you. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that would stop me from, you know, I mean, other than not seeing my wife and, you know, not being at my job that I love is uh, 
I just would hate to be in a situation where because I'm deaf in one ear, like something terrible happens, <laughs> you know? Right. So that would be my only real hesitation. But I, I think it would be a real fun experiment, but I wouldn't want to do it for like some of those guys to do it where it's like they're out there for three, four, five months, you know? I don't think I'd make it a day. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like what was that one guy that made it to like, a hundred days or something like that, mm-hmm. and they like tricked him because he was the last contestant. Oh, they, they do that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Like, actually, how long can this guy go? <laughs> but no, I mean they they have to film everything themselves. They, there's not a camera yeah. crew following them. That's why I always liked about some of those nature shows. You know, Bear Grylls is awesome because he has such experience and he has such good advice to when you're in a bad situation. He can teach you how to get out of it. But he has a camera crew there. If anything yeah. terrible goes wrong, well, they're going to be able to help him. But some of these people, like, if they, if you want to get a shot of you walking across a vast vista, guess what? You put the camera down, you walk across, then you got to come back, get it, and, and then, then go where you're going, again. you know? <laughs> so there's a lot of limitations to that type of thing. But it's a real fun show. Hmm. Eric plays Tears of the Kingdom out of context. Wait a minute. I just lit a rocket. Rocket explodes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yep. Uh, there were some fantastic Tears of the Kingdom moments. I think the one that you're talking about is I fell uh, from very, very high into a jungle right onto the spawn of one of the hardest enemies in the game. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> B-Man asks, Holt or Reagan? Oh. Ah. Damn ranking culture. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you can't have the other one as well. It's I just, know. Which one's better, Eric? Well, yeah, it's like like which one would I want to be friends with or which one would you funnier? want to work for? Like, yeah, which oh, one? Oh, 100% I want, to work, I want to work for Holt. He's just so concise. You know, there's no ambiguity. That's a tough one. Reagan I'll learn from, but I also think that it's like equivalent exchange. He scams me a bit. Like I like the <laughs> character oh, yeah. of Reagan better. Yeah. But I think Holt is probably funnier, but he also just has so much more opportunities. Like there's so much more Brooklyn Nine Nine and Holt than there is of Reagan and Bob Psycho. Yeah. yeah. Um agreed. It also I think Reagan is always gonna be entertaining. Holt, I feel like, is most entertaining when he's paired with someone that he can bounce off of. He needs to be a straight man, right? Yeah. Like Reagan has made me feel all of the emotions at a higher level yeah. than I think Holt has. And he has better finishing moves. Oh. Pocket salt! <laughs> <laughs> what is this corn meme, Calvin? I don't know. <laughs> like, I love it, but I don't understand. Do you not like corn on the cob? I love corn on the cob. Corn on the cob's yeah. so great. Corn on the cob is great. I just grilled some corn on the cob on the grill the other day. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, it was so good. It's from Only Up. Do you hate Cobb? The- oh, Only Up. Okay, yeah. When we were playing that, and you okay. got to the corn part, and you're upset. Yeah. yeah Remember but the corn parts? I did. I. This was made quick, Calvin. And we're with watching the corn? it weeks. Looking at it weeks later. I didn't struggle with the corn. I was warning everybody else about the corn. <laughs> I didn't have that reaction though. <laughs> Time heals all corn. wounds. Okay. <laughs> no, I more had a problem with the the other part. That was uh, the icicle. That yeah, that was fun, but I I got a little tilted. I think oh, there's yeah. a part where I'm just quiet for about 25 minutes as I silently rage trying yeah. to get past the section. <laughs> it, that's a that's a raging game. Yeah. No, no shame. Mm-hmm. Just happens. A bill's the bomb. Uh, will you be able to recommend games on the website for streams hmm. uh, in the future? That's possible. That's but an I interesting. I think that's something we could we yeah. could add someday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Calvin, can you tell us more about your and Carmen's Baldur's Gate 3 characters? Okay. Storm. Um, I am playing a 
uh, Way of the Fist monk. Um, I am a drow. Um, she is playing a high elf ranger. Um, specifically the kind, I can't remember what it's called, but the, uh, yeah, Beastmaster. That's what it is. Nice. So, it's been a lot of fun. We're level six. Uh, Bites Zadusto, uh, are there any upcoming shows or movies you're excited for? Also, may I suggest reacting to Talk to Me for Spooky Month? Talk to Me? I don't know what Talk to Me. I know Lie to Me. You can recommend that on the website. Yeah. Talk hmm. to Me. Um, things that I'm looking forward to. Well, I mean, we are going to be having a, a, a drought of content once uh, the stuff that was filmed before the strikes uh, happened. So in terms of the stuff that I know that was done, like I'm really interested in Skeleton Crew, which is going to be a Star Wars show uh, primarily focused on, on younger uh, actors, more like Stranger Things vibes. And I think that that's, uh, that's going to be fun primarily in live action, but I also... Am completely fine waiting for whatever needs to happen so that the actors and writers that are responsible for it are not, you know, worrying about what their, you know, the next couple of years are going to be like because they're not yeah, being paid the exactly. way that they should. So, in terms of like, am I excited and I can't wait? Sure, but I can await and I'm not that excited because I really want those people to get what they need. Yeah, I'm I'm more excited for the prospect that these people could be happy while they're doing yeah. the work that they want to be doing. Sure. Mm. Um, so I'm excited for that in a way. Uh, I want to watch Neil Breen's new movie. Neil Breen's new movie. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to anticipate the newest Spider Verse movie like I am. Oh, <sighs> part two. <laughs> oh oh my God. yeah, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you haven't watched our Spider Verse reaction, that's on early access at Blind Wave Beyond. You should just know that when you, I get to the end, emotions were felt. <laughs> I'm excited for Dune Part Two. I yeah. recently, for the first time, watched. Um, I can't remember the year, but the Dune movie, the uh, the one with Sting. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, oh shoot! When was that? Because there's the movie. Was there's that, a miniseries. Was that eighty seven or eighty nine? Could be, but I watched it for the first time, and um, man, there's so much amazing like. Like set work and like costume work, groundbreaking. Like the world is just crazy yeah. in that. Huh. But unfortunately, it's trying to tell a very complex story in a short amount of time. And like, I I loved like the first fifteen minutes of that movie, but then like someone just hits the fast forward button, and yes. like the pace just goes out the window, and it speeds through so much and yes. everything. Like there's still some cool stuff in there, but. Man, it, if I hadn't read the books, I don't think I would have any idea what was going on. So you just recently watched the... It, it's 1984, by the way. I was 84. too late, which makes it even more impressive, all the work that they did with the special effects and stuff. So you, you've only just watched the 84 version. Yeah. Did you watch the 2001, I remember starting it and not being able to finish it, but I'm curious to try it again now that I've read the book. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. See, I've seen them both. I I saw the later one first, so that one is of the two is my favorite. Yeah, even though <laughs> the uh, the eighty four is probably in some ways more accurate to the characters. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, where, what perspective was this? But yeah, I saw the badges. Okay. Uh, let's see. Super Dora, I think you answered this one already. Current situation with the new house. Oh, yeah. Just uh, unbearable waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and also the very fun time of trying to get all your documents in order. Being told, all right, you're good. And then, oh, wait, we need three more things. I'm, okay, we're good. Oh, you know what? We need three more things. So that's all that fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Eric and I are both going through that. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm moving house as well. 
Yep, yep. Fun times, but it'll be worth it. Yeah. I'm jealous of both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the moving part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Becky, um, anything about reordering the recommendation section? Uh, I heard the top three thing. So, yeah. Um, uh, we're only counting the first three that you put in. Mm -hmm. So you can put in as many as you want right now. Um, that should be fixed soon. But we're only counting the first three. Yeah. And remember, you can always you know, change up the order of those first three as much as you want uh, at any time. Mm -hmm. Especially when something comes out that you really enjoy and you want us to try. The more we see that recommended, the more likely it is we can try to find a, a spot for it when our schedule opens up. Patrick, um, not a question, but episode 78 of Ship It In has a new opening, but it's not free full length. Ah. Oh. Love your Naruto reactions and all you do. Okay. Yeah, that's probably just an oversight. Yeah. Um, if you do notice stuff like that, uh, you can hit us over on Discord and website feedback. Yep. It's a good place to do it. It was, uh, what number was it? 78? Oh, no, Eric. I, I hit I'm I pretty sure complete. they said 78. Calvin? I'm 99% <laughs> I'm sure it was 78. If it's not, then guess what? It's just going to be available to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> then you you made up for the one that didn't have it, that should have had it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, Warners, after watching the last episode of Ahsoka, how excited are you for Filoni's Star Wars movie that's in the works? Very. Extremely. It's not... It's not blowing air when we say that this is the guy that studied at the feet of the guy that created Star Wars. <laughs> that's what I would say. I mean, that's just fact. Yeah. That's not even blowing air. Uh, Robo Rex has one I don't understand, but Eric probably will. Hey, Eric, I'm ah. playing a Star Wars D&D &D campaign and uh -huh. just found out what a Star Weird is. Oh. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, a Star Weird is kind of like a... It's like a space banshee. Just, it's gotcha. really weird, it's scary, and it screams, and it hurts, and your ears bleed. All right. But yeah, they're very scary. Huh. In space? In space! But no one can hear Banshee <laughs> scream in space. I mean, they can live in space, but they can come down too and... Shut up! Okay. I heard the Death Star explode. In okay. the galaxy far, far away, uh, physics are different. Well... <laughs> You know, you probably actually could hear the Death Star explode because there's just such a mass of yeah. particles and stuff flying out. That's yeah. gonna. That's yeah. true. Like you can hear the sun. I just saw the Yamcha meme. By the way, that was amazing. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, the sun's scary. Have you ever heard the sun? <laughs> <laughs> it is very scary. <laughs> Eric posting Aaron's Jedi Survivor highlights. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was one point when uh. there was some miscommunication. And I put up on Wave Squadron what I thought was the final uh, episode. So I put Jedi Aaron plays and highlight finale. And I hit that. And then, like, I don't know. I always try to stick around for at least 15, 20 minutes just to make sure stuff isn't broken. And the first comment was like, finale? No, it's not. And I'm like, how am I supposed to know? I had to change it. And then it was, it was like... There's still there were still two more left, I think. <laughs> so, yeah. I was just, sorry, guys. I have to post these. But I have no idea what I'm posting sometimes. Yeah. Somet yeah, that happens too, like uh uh like Rick doing high Q. And I sometimes have to be like, I have no idea what to put for the tags. <laughs> <laughs> uh any plans on checking out Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven after the two point update and the DLC? Hmm. Um, um I own the uh the Phantom Liberty DLC. Okay. Um I had taken a break because I got to a mission that broke either by me or just the game. I That's couldn't I could valid. never tell in that game yeah. um whether it was me or the game breaking. You break a lot. Um but yeah, I'm I'm very very optimistic of of going back to that mm -hmm. when I have time away from Baldur's Gate 3. Cuz uh. uh, there was a specific um bug fix that they said they fixed the, the exact problem that I was having. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm kind of just curious to try it to see. Like, I've read the fixes and things, um, but, like, as far as the, like, character and, um, like, story of that game, it didn't really hook me too much, and there was a lot about that game that I didn't like. Um, just sort of in a, like, core 
gameplay functionality, mm-hmm. which it seems like some of that stuff is fixed with like the the patch and the DLC and things like that. So okay. I'm kind of curious, but there's also just so many games I know I'm going to like that I want to play. Yeah, that I'm hesitant to go back to one that I didn't that, that might be fixed. That's already burnt you. Yeah. yeah. Be sure to perform regular maintenance when you're Calvin. That's a good one. I would have done one with a lint roller, and Aaron's gonna go on your pants, like all over your pants, Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yep. <laughs> oh <pants>. no! <laughs> Not a chest burster <laughs> in the stomach. <laughs> okay, my expression <laughs> makes a bit more sense there. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello, my. I'm sorry that I immediately go to uh, Spaceballs because yeah. I saw Spaceballs way before I saw Alien. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, too. It's like I haven't seen all the movies that are referenced in Scary Movie, but I've seen Scary Movie, so I think I get it. Um, And then uh, Muhammad asked, Rick, why you're not in the Ahsoka reactions? Um, two reasons I would say, mainly. Uh, one, I've been really busy with the website, mm-hmm. so there's just been a lot to do, and uh, Which I've been can't thank you enough for working mm-hmm. on that. But um, uh, the second reason is I'm not feeling great right now, um, like mentally and physically. Um, it's kind of been on a downward slope since I would say like March or April. Yeah. And I kind of hit rock bottom around my birthday. And um, it's been a lot of problems with anxiety, panic attacks, and depression. Um, So just trying to like step away from some on-camera stuff. Mm -hmm. Because one, like when you're depressed, you don't enjoy things like you used to. And like I don't want to not enjoy the things that I'm watching. Sure. Um, like, you know, I really like Spy Family and Ahsoka. Like, I don't want to be in a point where I don't think I'm going to be able to watch it Mm -hmm. and not enjoy it. One, because I'm having, like, a panic attack, or two, because of the depression kind of stuff. So, um, and it's been harder to handle some of the sensory stuff lately um, just because of, like, the fight or flight response is pretty much on all the time. And it just is, it just wrecks me. It wrecks me physically and mentally and just trying to work through that basically. Sure. So yeah. Stepping away from some of that stuff for a bit. Um, going to try to keep the high Q reactions going and um, still do some Twitch stuff, mm-hmm. but um, kind of taking some time to step back and focus on some behind the scene things. Yep. Like uh, the website and some other stuff. Yep, uh, I know that we and the the viewers have missed your presence in a lot of the videos uh, that we've done recently. But we uh, we wish for your your health. I mean, your health is the top priority. Everybody's health should be the top priority. I remember getting into an argument with someone on our Discord uh, two years ago, I think, and they were talking about how we were handling some of the COVID stuff, and he was trying to tell me about, well, you know, you have to fight through those things, and you know this should be your priority when it comes to like what quote unquote manning up and doing what you need to do. And this is how you do it. And I'm, I just wanted to, it especially pissed me off because as a kid that grew up doing manual labor, like all the time on the farm, like when you feel the pressure to go do something that you know, you cannot do, you're just going to either hurt yourself more or hurt someone else more, you know, and as a society, like we need to be able to to tell people like, Hey, it is not a problem to put yourself as a priority because we all should feel that way. And we all need to, to understand that people putting themselves as a priority is, it's very important. It's paramount. And I feel like especially, uh, I, I don't want, I'm not trying to disparage any, like, you know, the other gender, but I, I feel like especially men have that problem where you get so, uh, not proud, but stubborn about how you're actually feeling, you know, because you're expected to 
you're expected to be strong, but to use the word strong so inappropriately that way, like the longer and the older I get, like it, it makes me more furious. <laughs> so it's uh, it's not a it's not an easy thing to tell or ask other people like, hey, I need to take time for me, but I hope that uh, we have been able to create an environment where that's getting easier for you to say, hey, I need some time. Yeah, no, it's um, you know, it's a a blessing to work the job that we have. Yeah. Um, you know, working with friends and stuff and like everyone here is understanding and supportive. Yeah. Um and stuff. It's just, you know, it, it's not easy to admit to yourself that you can't do something. Sure. Sometimes. Yeah. So like it takes me longer than it probably should to mm -hmm. be like I don't think I can do this. Yeah. And you know, yeah, we Oh, I think probably grew up with that. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, like pushed uh, through stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I still do it. Like, I, I, I recognize that that's how I am. I recognize that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, respect. I have a lot of respect for the men in my life that kind of like were a role model in that regard. Like, very strong work ethic, being able to put a lot of responsibility in their shoulders and be confident that they can pull that off. But I've also seen a lot of the men in my family push themselves so far that they've ruined things, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, it it's not about it's not about like well just you know pull yourself by the bootstraps. Like sometimes the right thing to do is to take a step back and and think about what you got to do next. You know, like you're dealt a hand of cards and you got to play them. And you you know it's it's not you don't you, you know you don't. You don't cheat. You don't try to get new cards. You don't try to, uh, um, you know, just forfeit the game. Like you got to play the cards, and if you keep doing that, then good things can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, like my me myself. Like we recently went to uh, Indie PopCon, and uh, it was the first time that at a convention we had a booth, and I think that. Uh, I think that when I've gone to conventions in the past, I've been really good at hiding how tiring it can be just trying to be in that type of environment but being uh, hearing you know impaired. But the booth put me in a spot that I couldn't move from really, and you that maneuver. Yeah, I couldn't can't I can't maneuver and do my my little things that I do to to give myself a little comfort. Yeah. Um. And I, I don't think I ever realized just how much it can tire me. Like to the point of like I don't want to do anything else today. I'm yeah. done. Like I want there were so many things I wanted to do in indie, but I was just like I can't I can't do it right now. Oh yeah. And I it I, I think barely... a couple of years ago I would have been like mad at myself, but this time I really felt like I need to do this. Yeah. You know? I could barely like go out in the evenings and get food immediately after the convention because I was just so exhausted. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I think that the the entire world had the lesson of like in the last couple of years of like, hey, when you're sick, stay the fuck home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get right? better and don't Nobody hurt Nobody <laughs> wants you here. Yeah. Uh, Robo Rex said, Eric's dad was a beast. Didn't he work with broken legs? Uh, no, actually, <laughs> that was the that was the point of, of success in that story is that uh, both of his knees were bad yep. and had to be replaced at the same time. Yep. So now he couldn't, he couldn't walk on them. He snapped both ligaments and both knees at the exact same time. Yeah. And um, don't get me wrong, he tried. Like, you would not believe the uh, the metal pole system he created to get on a tractor. Like, two weeks later. <laughs> but my mom had to, like, threaten him with, no! <laughs> you know, and like, yeah. took away the metal. <laughs> <laughs> Broke it! <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's... It's the it's there's two sides of that right like yeah. there's one where it's like I have a certain amount of respect of somebody that's like I have stuff I have to do, and sure. I, you know like in certain situations you have no choice but to do those things, but that doesn't uh, that necessarily doesn't compile every to real life. You know, necessitates yeah self sacrifice for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yep. But sure, I, you get it done this week, but what about next week when yeah. you're even worse off? My dad told me a story not just like a couple just a couple uh, last year. I had never heard this story. But he was working in North Dakota, uh, and the, usually they they would go to North Dakota for about two weeks, and this event took place about three days before he had to come home. No, 
two days before he had to come home. Uh, he was working. He had a metal uh, toolbox in the back of one of the trucks, and I don't, he doesn't know what exactly happened. His thumb was inside. And the metal toolbox came down and almost completely severed his thumb. Uh -huh. And the way he says it is he looked at it. It was dangling. And he looked at the guy next to him. And they're like, Mark, you can't. You have to leave. You got to go to the hospital. <laughs> and he's like, no, I have to finish. And like he, he almost lost that thumb because he didn't immediately take care of it. You know, and they want to say, Gosh. Dad, what are you thinking? You almost lost it. But he's like, look, there were a lot of people that were relying on me. I have to do this. And I'm like, I don't think any one of those people would have been like, Mark Whiteley failed me because he had to go to the hospital, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're relying on you to to yeah. to run the company mm -hmm. and, you know, to take care of me, my paycheck and yeah. stuff, but, yeah. No, it's, it, it's especially, it gets it's to crazy. me, like, the talk of ma toxic masculinity when it comes to safety. Yeah. So I, 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 there's this kind of weird thing where like, oh, I certainly I don't, I don't felt it. Like, the I'm, more I'm safe not, you're trying to be. I'm not scared. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't need a hard hat. Yeah, you're wearing glasses. You, you know, you're wearing. You wear safety glasses. You wear safety and glasses. glasses. Come on. It's like, dude, this hot ember might get in my eye. Yeah. And burn it. <laughs> <laughs> this this grinder yeah. wheel could split apart and go through my skull. Sure. Did I forget to unpack Aaron? <laughs> what? Image? what? Uh. Oh, dang. That's another meme put in that meme. Memeception. That is memeception. That's an old picture of me wide eyed because I haven't worn that jacket for a long time. Well, I've got um, bits and donations. Okay. Bits and donations. So at the end here. Uh, Let's see. So tomorrow there's going to be no group stream, correct? There will be no group stream tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and But we do want to make sure that everybody is wishing Aaron uh, a happy break a leg for his first performance <laughs> yes. of the play that he is starring in. Yeah. Uh, it's his the first lead. play, and he's lead the role. lead. So we all need to make sure that we're wishing him uh, a good time and to break a leg. And uh, yeah, he, we're all going to be having a group stream tomorrow for yes. many reasons, but one of them is Aaron's not going to be here, and we all just want to make sure we're giving him yeah. good energy. And I'll be there too. <laughs> yes, Aaron told me he's like, "Hey, come the next week." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, "Maybe, maybe don't come the first day. Let's <laughs> yeah. let's iron some wrinkles out first. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm going to be there the first day and the last day. Uh huh. Yep. So I will see." The the breaking of the leg mm -hmm. and the mending of the leg. I see the uh, the sign outside the theater every day, every time I go home. Yep. So I'm looking forward to it. It's really funny that, uh, you know, Aaron having the online presence he does, like they started to you know, kind of roll out to the local uh, economy that, hey, this is coming out. Make sure you come see it. You know, it's on the news and the newspaper. But Aaron will put up a one of the, things on his Instagram and it outshines all of the others yeah. because he has so many followers. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like us getting oh. the uh, the doorman video. Yeah, the doorman video. The views up, right? That's right. We just sat there for an entire podcast and all rewatched it over and over. Yeah, 25K. Oh, Calvin. I know. The Fat Bandicoot, thank you so much for your subscription i believe it's going on for 27 months i can't i still can't understand this new stream elements i'm doing my best he's doing his best so hopefully you've been doing it for 27 months <laughs> and we greatly appreciate it thank you fat bandicoot uh sereno 37 months thank you very much <laughs> thank you raptor melanie yeah i'm trying to remember the context i mean you know it just your mom knows when you're causing trouble right yeah like, <laughs> is that what it is? In a supernatural way, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Wants to give him a bath, and he doesn't want a bath. Well, Rookie, since last podcast, I've done 20 some reactions, <laughs> and a lot happens, and it's all real fun. But sometimes, I I can't re I can't be expected to remember. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Splatoonie huh. Looney, thank you for the 37 months. You're Looney. Thank you so much. Dickus Bickus, 56 months. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, I do appreciate the, the, the masking around the spoons in this image, by yeah, the way. No. Yeah, no. It's it's good work. 
His story of showing his kids Jurassic Park makes sense. Yes. <laughs> okay, I remember now. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yep. Do we need to um? <laughs> do we need to like strike against um Photoshop for meme creators? <laughs> do we? <laughs> <laughs> Replaced with AI. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Cuddle Buddy, thank you oh, for the 25 uh, bits. Thank, thank you. you, Cuddle. Stormy Boy, thank you for the 50 months. Thank you, Stormy. Thank you. Becky Setch, thank you for the 21 months. 21 months. Splatoonie Looney, thank you for the 500 bits. Thanks so much. And bits. for the... No, um... <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> and also for the uh, gifted subs. <laughs> Thank you for the gifted subs. Uh, uh, I like that one a, a lot. Yeah, that one's good. I do like that one. I uh, I went on a kick of watching people react to old DBZ, like, you know, not like a bridge, but like scenes from the old DBZ with like, you know, the Bruce Falconer music that I used to like. So this scene is very fresh in my mind. And yeah, that's that's really perfect. Nice. Uh, thank you, Sandwich, for the 14 months. It says, awesome website. Smiley face. Thank you. Thanks, Sandwich. Fleet Admiral, five months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A <laughs> kicker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, Rick, I know you're not watching the glory, uh, but I the violence that comes to me in <laughs> watching this. It's you know, it's a, it's us. a show that's primarily based on uh, uh, bullying, and I have a, a not a lot of experience with bullying, but I have a lot of experience with just. Toxic masculinity, you know, and I just want to hurt these people. <laughs> I know that, like, people in that situation can't do that. So it, it really comes out of me, like, just fucking kick her, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ahsoka Simp, thank you for the 11 months. Thank you. Thank you. Odeth for 20 months. Thank you very much. Thank you, Odeth. It's Dev, nine months. Hope all's well with you guys. Will be waiting till the end of time for Mr. Robot to win a poll. It's the perfect show for you guys. Much love and may the force be with you. I've seen like two or three episodes of Mr. Robot. Yeah. And I stopped watching because I thought it would be a really interesting reaction series. So I'm pulling for it. Whenever whenever uh, it gets put on a poll, I'm, I'm hoping for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's up to the votes. As soon as a show goes on our poll, it is... Never something I'm going to watch until we do it on Blind Wave. So yeah. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Zalak, thank you for the 13 months. Thank you. And finally, Andy, thank you for the 17 months. Thank you, Zlack and Andy. Thank you. I don't get this one. I don't. Oh, it's a video. Okay, that's why I wasn't getting it. Is this a video we need to hear or are we just watching it? Hopefully there's subtitles. Oh no. It's from Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, I get it. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> uh, I'm guessing that's Hunt Me. Yeah, that's good. I, I see the watermark. That's good. <laughs> so much usage out of that one that one picture. That one picture where we're trolling the normies. <laughs> all right i think that's gonna do it i think so guys thank you so much for checking out the podcasts um let's see in terms of the next stream we're not going to be having a group stream tomorrow i don't think we're going to be having one on saturday uh just make sure you guys are following us on social media for when we announce we're going to be having uh october coming up yeah in the scream stream and we've been doing a lot of planning for that uh you guys aren't going to want to miss those. Those are always a lot of fun, but we have something special cooking up for you for some of those streams. So make sure you guys are following us here on Twitch, following us over at YouTube, Blind Wave Gaming, Blind Wave, Wave Squadron, Roll with the Punches, Pokemality. There's so many different ways that you can enjoy the stuff that we do here. But if you want one place where you can see it all, blindwave.com. Go beyond. Thanks, guys.